Today, I'm going to discuss the semantic confusions that arise in conversations regarding identity politics, especially within anti-capitalist circles. This is going to be the first in a series about identity politics, and will seek to establish a working definition which can be used throughout the series. I will not attempt to mask my opinions on identity politics, but the primary focus of this video will be on semantics alone. I will be assuming that the viewer has a basic understanding of Marxist class analysis. All works referenced in this video will have links in the description. The dictionary definition of identity politics is a tendency for people of a particular demographic to form exclusive political alliances. This definition is fine for casual conversation, but leaves something to be desired when attempting to describe more precise sociological paradigms. We must therefore look elsewhere if we want to understand what people are talking about when they use this term. Anti-identitarian leftists tend to use the term identity politics to describe a way of looking at oppression that centers around identity rather than economic relations. This way of viewing oppression reduces economic class to an aspect of one's identity. One common objection to this type of identity politics is that it ignores that economic oppression is the primary mechanism through which all other forms of systemic oppression are enacted. For example, the disproportionately large percentage of black men within American prisons is mostly due to economic exploitation, rather than racial discrimination. According to a 2004 article by Becky Petit and Bruce Western published in the American Sociological Review, 20% of black American men and only 3% of white American men are imprisoned by the age of 30. 80% of this discrepancy is the result of higher crime rates among black men, suggesting that only 20% of the discrepancy can be blamed on discriminatory policing and racism within the courts. The higher crime rates among black men is the result of poverty and cultural problems within black communities, which are themselves the result of economic exploitation under capitalism. About 80% of the discrepancy in prison populations can be attributed to economic oppression, and about 20% to racial discrimination. To portray racial discrimination as the primary oppressive force of black communities would be dishonest and would be a prime example of the type of identity politics criticized by anti-identitarian leftists. Leftists who defend identity politics often define them in a very different way. For example, YouTube content creator anarcho Pack uploaded a video addressing the issue of how to define identity politics in September 2016. I will summarize the relevant points made in this video, but I highly recommend that you go and watch it yourself if this is something that you're interested in. anarcho Pack describes identity politics as a type of political theory and practice that was developed within the 1960s and 1970s New Left. These politics centered around lines of identity, such as being a woman, gay, or black, and sought to conceptualize and combat the particular types of oppression suffered by these demographics. These movements had three beliefs in common. One, structures of oppression produce shared experiences and identities among the oppressed. Two, the shared experiences and identities of an oppressed social group can be used as a basis for building a social movement aimed at the liberation of said social group. Three, the liberation of an oppressed social group must be achieved by the oppressed group themselves. If everyone was to use this definition of identity politics, then it would not be a particularly controversial issue on the left. The Black Panther Party is a group whose politics embodied this definition, but most anti-identitarian leftists do not consider the Black Panther Party to have been identitarians. This is because the BPP's politics surrounding black identity fit within a Marxist understanding of economics. It is clear that the pro- and anti-identitarian left are using the term identity politics to describe two different phenomena. Therefore, if we are to have a productive conversation about identity politics, we will need to differentiate between these two types. One potential solution would be to refer to identity politics that operate outside of an anti-capitalist framework as liberal identity politics. In a later video, Anarchopac asserts that the problem with liberal identity politics is not the identity politics, but rather the liberalism. The issue I have with the solution is that it implies that the only paradigms which reduce oppression to matters of identity are liberal ones. If this were the case, then once again, identity politics would not be a contentious issue on the anti-capitalist left. It would just be more evidence that liberalism is an inherently incoherent ideology. The problem that anti-identitarian leftists seek to address cannot just be liberalism, because there is no reason that an anti-capitalist cannot practice this type of identity politics. There is no reason one cannot view their anti-capitalism as a struggle along the lines of working class identity. It is entirely possible to fit anti-capitalism within an identitarian framework rather than the other way around. It is entirely possible to have a worldview where class struggle is a struggle against one sort of oppression, rather than a struggle against the primary mechanism of all oppression itself. 
This type of identity politics is not limited to liberals, and we need a term for it if we are to address it. For the sake of semantic clarity, I'm going to invent some terms. From this point on, I will refer to the type of identity politics outlined by Anarchopac as liberatory identity politics, and I will refer to the politics based on a worldview that reduces class to an identity as reductionist identity politics.